Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to continue to work on the MGB GT ignition system more specifically the electronic ignition. Now in the previous video we have been fixing the problems on cylinders number three and four where we had an issue with the carburetor now that has been fixed but I noticed another problem while I was on the track with this car. Cylinders number two and three seem to be running very rich which is in essence impossible because they are fed by a different barrel of the carburetor and I can actually see it on the black stuff that's on the spark plugs but when I checked it with my timing light I noticed that I have no pickup on my timing light on those two cylinders let me show you what I mean and to check that the timing is right on each of the spark plugs I'm going to use my strobe light which I have right here and I'm just using an external battery because it's easier because the battery in an MGB GT is all the way in the back and my strobe light needs some power so let me hook that up and then we can clamp it onto the engine alright so I'm going to clamp it onto the first spark plug you see we got flashes right so that's the timing the timing is actually right if I put this to cylinder number two guess what no flashes whatsoever not good it means the uh, high tension for the spark is too low go to cylinder number four guess what I have flashes cylinder number three let's see I got no flashes so that is really no good so there is something wrong with cylinders number two and three with the ignition as you have seen cylinders number two and three I wasn't able to pick up the high tension pulse on the spark plug leads with my strobe light it's only when I revved up the engine that I could pick some up and then it became actually very sporadic it wasn't good at all so either the high tension leads are now bad or the ignition coil is bad or the distributor is bad or the electronic ignition is bad so there's still a couple of options so I have gone through a process of elimination and I did fit another ignition coil it made no difference so the coil is good on this car in fact even the new coil coil did exactly the same things I also changed the spark plug leads out because maybe the spark plug leads were bad nothing wrong with that and I changed out the distributor cap and I verified the distributor cap as you've seen in my last video nothing wrong with that either so that leaves me with only two parts left that is the actual electronic ignition module which is a lumination ignition that I have on this car or it is the optocoupler inside the distributor so we're going to inspect all that and I will take the distributor out and we'll take it to the lab and then see what happens with it but before we do so I want to check the exact pulses how strong or how faint they are by comparing the two cylinders and for that I'm going to use an oscilloscope this is purely for demonstration purposes uh, you don't need to do this because it's not going to help anything we know the pulses seem to be weak if my strobe light can't pick it up so let me hook that up and then we can have a look to compare the high tension pulses on cylinders number one and two I'm going to use equal length um, wires as you can see they are of the same length I'm going to wrap them as a spiral around the spark plugs of each individual spark plug lead and then I'm going to tape it off so we have exactly the same amount of winding, windings uh, so we should have more or less the same signal spark plug number one I'm going to wrap it around as you can see a couple of times and I will also tape it up so it stays in place so as you can see we've got both cylinders number two and one with the same kind of coil the same length the same amount of windings connected up and now I can hook up the scope so I'm going to hook up the probes and then we can see it on the oscilloscope so 
also have what you see on the oscilloscope right now. These are the pulses on the first cylinder, which we are picking up from the spark plug. So if I increase the speed, you'll see these pulses getting closer to each other. So that looks quite good. Now let's have a look on the second cylinder, the one with the problem. So I'm going to connect the second channel, which is the yellow one. Let me move the blue one out of the way a little bit, or down let's say. Now you can see that the yellow channel, which is cylinder number two, really is having no pulses, very sporadic. So it's only when we wrap up we can see some pulses on the second line and that is really no good. Now that we have the evidence on the scope, let me take out the distributor, the ignition module, and the ignition coil, all that stuff together, and we'll take it to the bench upstairs, and we're going to walk through that whole system and see how that works. I'm going to remove now the distributor, but first of all, disconnect this electronic ignition, which is now taped up a bit so I need to remove all this tape so I can disconnect it. Okay. I don't want to break these connectors right now because we're going to need them on the test bench upstairs. I already loosened up the distributor so I should be able to take it out. And I don't care really in what position the engine is right now. So here is our distributor and you can see we have three leads coming out. Uh, these are the leads that actually go into the optocoupler inside. So let me take off the cap so we can see the inner part of it. What we have here is a Lucas 43D4 racing distributor. It's slightly different than another distributor because it has no vacuum connection on the side. Now inside uh, things are modified you find no breaker points instead you find a LED beam which is infrared which beams from the top to the bottom which is a receiving transistor and each time the beam is cut by this chopper blade that goes through it you will get a pulse let me take the rotor off because we don't need this and now you have a better view on this chopper now if the chopper blades are broken or crooked or not in the right place then we're going to have a problem. Now this you can typically replace. See, there we go. You can take this off, the chopper blade. And you gotta make sure you put it on in the right way, of course, um, that it locks and it doesn't move around. I think this is a little bit too loose. Now it might be that the infrared um, LED or the sensor is worn out and it's not fast enough anymore in reacting to the pulses. So this is what we're going to check out now on the bench and therefore I will have to apply power to it, obviously, and we will have then to measure the pulse that comes out of it. And to do that, I'm going to again use my oscilloscope. So guys, remember this is illumination ignition, so it might be different than another one, but we have three wires here. We got a red one, a black one, and a blue one. The blue one is the signal coming back from the um, Optocoupler, the pulse, and this is the power supply, plus 12 volts on red and negative on the black one. So I'm going to hook this up and try not to make a short. So I'm going to use a battery for that one, but you can use whatever you like to use for your specific setup. And I'm just going to make sure that we don't short anything because that would not be a good thing to do. So let me connect this up here and I'm going to try to I insulate this a bit so we don't have a problem. Good enough. And we have the negative, which is going right here. I just put some tape up as well. And then we have the signal. So I'm going to hook that up to the oscilloscope and then we see what happens. So let's hook up the signal up to 
the oscilloscope. We don't want this uh, to connect to the ground. And obviously we need to have a ground reference for the scope. So I'm going to hook that up right here. All right. So now we've got a lot of connections on that one. So remember, red is the positive from the battery. Black is the negative from the battery. And the blue one is a signal coming out of the optocopper. So now as soon as I connect my battery, uh, the LED here will start to emit. But you can't see that because it's infrared light. Here is the chopper plate. Right now the chopper plate is not blocking the LED. If I turn the chopper plate, watch what happens then on the oscilloscope. The signal should actually go up. See that signal? Now it's up and blocking the infrared beam. If the chopper plate moves on, then it drops again. And then the next chopper plate comes in and it moves up again. So if I keep doing this at a fast speed, you can see how we're creating these pulses. So now I know that this infrared sensor is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. I'm going to try to rotate now the distributor with my drill. And then you can watch the screen and then you should see the pulses. They should be very regular. You can see the pulses are working just fine. So I know that this optocopter has no issue. So what we've seen so far is that the optocopter is not having a problem. It generates proper sequenced pulses uh, once we rotate it. They are of the right level, so that should be enough for the electronics ignition module, the amplifier, to amplify these uh, pulses to drive the current through the ignition coil. And maybe we have a problem now with the actual amplifier. So I'm going to take the amplifier out of the car and we put it on the test bench and see what happens. So here is the module and uh, I'm going to unlock it and then I'll put it on the test bench. We'll have to take care of some of the cables that we can actually remove those and then we'll test it out. So what you see here is the setup on how that system fits in the car. I've got my ignition module right here, which is nothing more than an amplifier really. It's just going to amplify the pulses coming from the optocopper that we looked up before. So it's connected with this black cable and the yellow sleeves to the distributor, which is then going to the optocoupler inside, and we've seen that function before. There's also a red cable on the ignition module, which is the plus 12 volts to make the solid state transistors and the other components work inside. And then we have, of course, the ground on it, which is the black cable, uh, which is going to the negative side of the battery. So we got plus 12 volts, we got negative or ground, and then we have this purple cable. The purple cable is the one that is driving current through the ignition coil. It's going to the negative side of the coil. The positive side of the coil is going with a positive wire to the battery. So it is the ignition module that will drive power through the ignition coil and will result in ignition. I also have a spark plug sitting here and it's connected with this high tension lead uh, underneath the table. Uh, so we can actually see the sparks if this is going to work or not. Now, um, the first thing I'm going to show you is that when I rotate the rotor, the chopper bait will chop the signal and we should see sparks actually on the spark plug every time the chopper is passing through the um, optocoupler. So let me hook that up and then we'll see. That's now connected. So let's have a look on the spark plug itself so you can actually see the sparks. So there you go. I don't think the sparks are very strong. Maybe that's my view, but I think they're a little bit weak. The next thing I'm going to do is to install an amp meter and see how much current that the ignition is pushing through the ignition coil and that should be around 7 to 9 amps. The documentation states 7 amps, so let's see. So therefore we'll have to inject our amp meter in the circuit of the purple wire, so in series. So let me do that and then I'll show you how much amps we get and when we get the current through it depending on the chopper blade.
I have my ammeter now in series with the purple wire which is going to the ignition coil. So I disconnected the wire, put my meter in between and now I can turn on the power and see how many amps we draw. That should be between 7 and 9 amps. Right now we are drawing, yeah, 7 amps. So current is flowing. If I rotate the chopper and it blocks the light, then there's no more current going through the coil. If the chopper goes on, then we recreate current through the coil. So this is how that mechanism is working. And you can see each time the chopper blade passes through, we are cutting the current. So what we've seen so far is an easy test procedure to test out if the basic functionality of all these components is working. However, we have not tested the real dynamics of that amplifier module and there could still be problems with that that we can't spot the way we've tested it. So as a last resort, I have gone back and bought a new one. And it's always good to have a spare one anyway because these modules may actually blow. They can get very hot. So I bought both the new ignition module, which is this one right here, but also I bought the uh, chopper blades and that's a separate set. In fact, I think it's chopper blades plus the infrared. Uh, no, it's not. It's only the chopper blades. And I have two of them because you can have two sizes of uh, distributors. So you need to fit the right one. And of course, this is for a four cylinder, as you can see, because the chopper only has four kind of wings. If you have six wings on it, then it's for a six cylinder. Now, if you're going to buy this stuff, well, look around on the market because uh, exactly the same set, the same original source, uh, the difference is 200 euros a piece. I found sites, I'm not going to quote them, uh, which they charge you 480 euros just for this set. And I found another site um, where I live for 239 euros for exactly the same thing. So somebody is ripping us off big time. And I see this more and more on old timer parts that people try to rip us off. Sad thing. Anyhow, so I'm going to fit all this into the car and then I'll do some short adjustments and alignments and then we try it out and see what happens. So, first part is the optocoupler and then inside we've got our amplifier module and as you can see this is exactly the same as the one we got on the car and it even has all the official stamps on it so and numbers, so that is all good. Uh, yeah, let's go and install it now. So I'm going to remove the optocoupler. I already have cut off the connectors because otherwise it's hard to get it through this hole. I'm just going to enlarge the grommet a bit before I put the new cables in it. So installing the optocoupler is very simple. All you need to do is to remove this little screw here and take that out. And that's it. And then we go in to install the new one. Now, the old one was probably still all right, but I decided to change it anyhow. And I will keep the old one as a spear. Just want to make sure that we don't touch the LED and everything is blocked as it should be blocked and that's how it looks like so now that is good all i need to do now is route these uh, wires through the site and we should be good to go okay. there we go it took a bit of effort to get it through but at the end it came through all the way now we need to make sure that we route this properly inside. I might put a little tire up here so it doesn't move. Right, so now we need to put the connector up and make sure it mates properly. So blue, blue. Now it's the black one and then the red one is on the other side. So red one is on this side. And I want to hear a click. 
All right, that looks good. And then we have the last one, which is the black one, which should go right in the middle. And we go. I could hear a click. And that's it. So now this should made up. So blue, black, red. So we are all set to install it. So I think everything looks now quite all right. Nice passing through the chopper blades. Chopper blades are intact. All right. Now, as you have noticed, the two chopper blades that came out of the package didn't fit. They were both the same size. There was supposed to be a small one and a big one, but both were the same. So that must have been a mistake. Nevertheless, I was able to recover my old one. So that's the one I'm going to use. So let me fit it in the car now, and then we'll see. So um, as you can see, there's always something that can go wrong. And this is just very simply a bolt, but I got some spare bolts. So if you think it's only in your case that things go wrong sometimes, well, I can assure you it happens with me as well. Okay, that is good. Now I need to do a little bit of cabling, which is running this cable right here uh, alongside this one all the way to the distributor. So I'm going to connect this guy up first. Uh, make sure the blue is on blue and red is on red, which is the case. So I probably will tie wrap this down here and then run it like this. That should be good enough. Now I can let this one cable break out and continue with the others. Let me get some tie wraps to tie all this together and then we put a connector on this one so we can connect the plus. So all the cables are now connected and if you're in doubt on how to connect it, there's a leaflet that comes with it on how to do it. So you cannot really go wrong with these cables. There's not that many to be connected. But I'm going to remove the spark plugs now because now we need to do the alignment of the, or the timing of the engine. And it's easier with the spark plugs removed. So this is what I'm going to do first. Then I'm going to seek top that center of my first cylinder. I will position the pulley on the crankshaft to the um, about eight or nine degrees before that center, which is my static timing. And then I will rotate the distributor so that the rotor itself points to cylinder number one on the distributor cap and that the blades or the um, chopper blades are actually just starting to cover the uh, LEDs or the infrared sensor on the optocoupler. Now I'm going to check the valves here in the front on the cylinder number one and I'm going to use a big rack, rack, uh, racket to rotate the engine in its normal rotating direction. And I can see right now we've got intake so it should be coming up soon. So if I rotate, I can see now the valve is closing. Now we should have compression stroke and I'm going to check my timing and this is about right. Uh, I have markers on my pulley on the bottom. See those two little white spots in the middle, one on the left and one a little bit below. The one below is on my pulley and the one on the left is actually on the marker on the engine case. You probably can see now that the chopper bit is about to blank out the infrared beam. And that is good. Um, if I rotate the engine a little bit more to top that center, that actually, that little um, wing there should be two thirds covering the LED. Uh, and you do this by rotating your distributor. And now you need to turn the distributor. Once you hooked up a voltmeter on your a negative side of your ignition coil uh, until you see 12 volts lighting up and then you know you have the right spot. Of course, you can also use a strobe light. I have adjusted the static timing on the distributor according to the uh, guidelines that they provide. And it's a bit different for each uh, electronic system depending on the picker points. And now I'm going to put back the spark plugs and uh, see if it works. 
course, we still have to do the fine tuning with the strobe light on the timing, but I suspect this will be working. He's actually putting my valve cover back up because I don't want to spill oil all over the place. So let's try and see what happens. Now that was a very quick start and honestly I didn't do nothing else than the basic static alignment. Okay. I think this is about right. Okay, we got the timing light. That's a lot of advance, guys. That's more like it. So as you can tell, the engine is now running very smooth. Now we have the ignition module fixed, and now you can see both the blue and the yellow line are more or less the same. And these are the process for cylinder number two and three. So this is exactly how it should sound like. It starts immediate. So with the new ignition module, it seems that things are now fixed. And you wouldn't say that the old one was faulty on the test bench, but of course we couldn't test the dynamics of it. But now it starts like a champ and it actually runs very smooth for the changes that this engine has because this has a race cam inside. So folks, we've come to the end of this video and as you have seen, we tested this ignition module and the optocoupler on the bench and things turned out to be quite all right. Nevertheless, when this ignition module was in the car, we had some issues with cylinders two and three. Now with the new ignition module in it, that is no longer an issue and now the engine runs very smooth. So that makes me uh, very happy. Although I did not expect the module to be faulty, but that was about the last thing that could go wrong. There is very little that can go wrong with an optocoupler. It either works or it doesn't work. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in my next video, which is finally going to be old trusty. I know, I've promised it for a long time already, but there's always something else that comes in between. So thank you for watching. Bye-bye.